Okay, my friends, it is seven o'clock. So glad that you are here with us and hope you're excited to see some fun card ideas. As usual, we will start with the digital items first. We'll do that for the first half hour and then we will move to the hands-on. Um, we are recording this, so I will post this tomorrow or the weekend whenever I get the two things split up because I have to go and split them up and also wipe out the pre-class conversations at the beginning. So we're glad you're here. If you have any questions, type them into the chat. Lisa is there answering those questions and she would love to be able to help you. And actually we're gonna start off tonight with points because gosh, I'm thinking about tonight. So we're going to randomly give away points to Mary Beth. Mary Beth, if you will send your account number to Lisa Evans. You can do that privately or you can just chat it, whatever you'd like. She'll get 25 points deposited in your account tomorrow or maybe tonight, depending on how she multitasks. So with that having been said, we're gonna turn it over to Brooke and let her walk us through Heritage Makers. We are actually not going to spend time with Snap to Finish tonight. We are in the process of getting greeting cards added, but they are not live, and so there's not really anything we can show you in Snap to Finish related to cards. But they will be here in just a few weeks. We are so very close, and in fact, we're very, very close on calendars. Okay, so watch for those two items that are coming just time for the holidays so you can get your greeting cards done and your calendars and things and either snap to finish or heritage makers whichever you prefer okay so brooke's going to show us some fun card things in heritage makers when she's done she'll turn it back over to me so brooke are you ready ma'am i am ready okay i'm making you the host okay let's see if i can remember there we go share my screen let's try this All right, are we seeing, we should be seeing the Heritage Makers products page. Yes, yes we are. Okay, perfect. So I wanted to start out tonight just by going over kind of an overview of all of the different greeting card options that there are in Heritage Makers. So this right here is just the main products page. If you click products up at the top, this is what you will see. And it's got all the different categories. You've also got our memories for life and anthology DIY on here but you've got all of the different categories, main categories of Heritage Makers products. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about greeting cards and invitations. I'm gonna click in there and you've got this whole listing of all of the different products that we have available. Lots of different fun options. So I wanted to go in a little more detail about the different ones available here, maybe some differences, some things that might make you want to or not want to use those as your personal holiday cards this year. Just some different things that you might wanna be aware of. So um, you've got the basic uh, invitations and greeting cards in just a four by six, four by six invitation, four by six greeting card, five by seven invitation, and a five by seven greeting card. These both come in both orientations. So you can have these in, in portrait or landscape, whichever direction you would like. And there are templates galore for any of these styles. Those are both uh, both sizes are great for direct shipping. So if you prefer to enter all your addresses into your Heritage Makers address book and just have us ship them out for you, it eliminates a lot of the hassle of sending out greeting cards uh, for the holidays. So really good to know about those. Another one that is direct shippable is our 4x8 photo card. So this is just a single-sided card. And again, portrait or landscape, but it's just a cute 4x8 card and lots and lots and lots of fun things that you can do with this and single-sided, easy to direct ship, great. And then you've got some other options. So you've got our five by five greeting cards and our five by five trifold cards. Those are both really fun, but you should know that those are not direct shippable because of the shape, because of the square shape, they cannot be direct shipped. You do have to um, do the postage yourself on those. Uh, the same is true down here for the five by five square die cut card just because of the shape. Uh, you've also got these fun pop-out cards and die-cut cards in all kinds of different shapes. We added these, I think, say you might have to correct me, two or three Christmases ago. I believe it was uh, three, three Christmases ago. Three. Yeah. yeah. Um, but these are all kinds of fun. So these cute ones here, these two and these two, uh, are different shapes that pop out and they've got a little hole to be ornaments. So great fun to send an ornament to your family members or friends 
that they can hang on their tree and enjoy and not quite the hang up and enjoy Christmas card and then throw it away. They might keep it. It's got a cute picture, especially if it's got your family, your names on there, something a little more useful than just a card. So if you prefer something that's multifunctional like that, these are adorable. They're fun. You've got that cute brace shape. This one is an adorable circle ornament. You can see this, the little cutout right there for a ribbon. This one is an adorable snowflake. I love the shape of this one and you can do a lot of fun things in studio with this. And then the last one is just another fun ornament shape, but with this point down at the bottom. And I am not sure what that shape is called, but I know we've all seen fun Christmas ornaments like that hanging on trees, just kind of a classic ornament shape and just really fun to do. So these are all two-sided. They are basically just a five by seven invitation with this fun punch out. So it is marked in studio. Maybe we'll go into one of those and I'll show you what this looks like in studio, but it shows you where it's going to pop out so you can design what's in the middle and what goes around on both sides. So those are really, really, really fun. And then you've got these other die cut cards that are just shapes. These don't have a punch out section. These are just die cut into shapes. So you've got two five by five shape or five by five sized ones. This one is a circle with this cute scalloped border, really fun. And then this is a scalloped square five by five. So those are both, they come with five by five envelopes. All of the cards, I should mention, all of the Heritage Makers cards and invitations come with envelopes. So if you order 50 cards, you get 50 envelopes. If you direct ship the ones that are direct shippable, that takes care of the envelopes. It'll just send it to whoever you enter the addresses for. But if you order the cards coming to you, they will come with envelopes that fit. And they are nice envelopes that are great to be able to put postage on and go through the mail or just to write a quick name on and hand them to people, whichever you prefer. But they do come with envelopes that fit to help you with that. And then you've got, this is our single five by seven uh, sized uh, die cut card, excuse me. And I love the shape of this one. I've done a lot of fun things with this shape and I love it. So again, double-sided just comes in that shape. Yep. And then you've got two four by eight sized uh, die cut cards. And again, these are our photo cards. So they only have designs on one side, the four by eight sized ones. Um, but these are in a fun shape. So this is kind of a, an accentuated of that same shape we just saw before. And then you've got the very, very popular leaf shape. This is cute. So it's basically a four by eight card, but then with rounded corners on these two opposite corners. So it's a very uh, kind of a contemporary shape that is very, very popular. So these are all cute. And again, same single sided design here. So the back is white. So if you think about it, this is the same as a five by seven that is double sided. The five by fives are double sided. All of these pop out ones are double sided. It's just the four by eight that are single sided, whether it's the, the rectangle shape or these die cut ones. But those are the only ones that are single sided. The rest you design both sides. So just good to be aware of. And like I said, we do have greeting card options if you prefer to have a little space to maybe write a personal note. All four of these, the five by five greeting card, the five by five trifold card, the five by five set or five by seven greeting card and four by six greeting card. Those all um, are standard greeting card shapes that open up so that you could write on the inside. Okay. I want to point out one of the things about the five by five greeting card to keep in mind too, is that um, when you get those and need to ship them for the holidays, they actually will cost you extra. I don't know why, but for some reason square cards cost more when you send them through the postage system. Yep, so it does require additional postage and that's why we don't do direct shipping for those. Yeah. But they are so cute and so much fun. So if you love them and if it's worth it to you, they are so much fun. So all of those five by five sized ones, they do require additional postage through the mail. But that's just because they're a little bit of an odd shape. At least the post office considers them an odd shape. So it's just one of those things, the post office. <laughs> okay. Now, we are going to hop into the template gallery. Sorry, I was uploading some pictures. Apparently one was a little big. Okay, so in the template gallery, if you were to open it right now, this is what you would see. So we've got brand new, cute Christmas card templates, a calendar, 
lots of fun things going through here. If you keep scrolling down, you're going to start to get into fall things and then into summer. It, it just keeps going based on what was added most recently. So if you're going in here to look at Christmas cards or holiday cards, you can do it a few different ways. So you could search for a term like Christmas, and that will pull up any that were tagged specifically with that term. So that might not get all the Christmas cards, but it will get a good selection. It'll certainly get the ones that are very Christmassy if someone put Christmas in the tags. You can also over here, you can click Christmas in the coming seasons. So this is a list of all the seasons that are upcoming. Once you get in Christmas, it'll show you different categories within there, or you can narrow it by uh, product type. So we'll get there in a second. But I'm going to show you a special trick to see all of the Christmas and holiday cards really, really easily without having to weed through a bunch of other stuff. So if you click Christmas or one of those holidays, you'll see up here that the, the, uh, the heading just above the holiday is the season. So this is true if you were to click on, say, Mother's Day, when that's an option, it would bring you spring up here. So I'm going to click on winter and give it a second to load. And then it will show me here all of the different holidays that fall under the winter category. So before we were seeing a few fall ones because it's still fall. We were still seeing Thanksgiving, but now I'm just seeing the winter holidays. You'll notice Valentine's Day is still considered a winter holiday in here because it is in February, which is still in winter. So you will have Valentine's Day items in here. But other than that, you're only going to get Christmas, Hanukkah, and New Year's. So anything that falls under those categories is now showing. And then I can just go here to greeting cards and invitations. And I'm going to narrow it down to everything that's in that product category. So now if I scroll down, I'm going to see, you will see some Valentines in here, but those are pretty easy to overlook. But this way you can keep scrolling down and you're going to get, there's a few Valentines, but you'll get all the different holiday cards for the winter holidays. Um, that makes it really easy to go down and you could scroll down quite a ways and find some really fun holiday cards that are still quite relevant and adorable and fun that might not be brand new from this year, but are still very great to use. So any of these, even if they were from a couple of years ago, they're still great templates and worth a while, worth a minute of your time to look through and see if anything strikes your fancy. So there's a lot of fun ones in here. You'll notice there are a couple of greeting card options. If you prefer something with a little more space to write a note, either type it in here or leave some space to write. But lots of fun options in here. And this makes it so that you can look through all of the different Christmas and holiday cards that we have available so that you're not only narrowed to the brand new templates, but you can go down and find some that might look be a little bit older, but that you might love. So definitely take time to go and look through while you're picking a Christmas or a holiday card for this year and find something that you absolutely love. So that's, that's my big tip with the template gallery right now is just make sure that you're getting a full picture. So you're not Thing, okay, these are the brand new ones. I guess that's what I have to choose from. Know that there are literally 1,200 different holiday card templates for the winter holidays. And I would guess not even a quarter of that is Valentine's Day. The vast majority of that number right there is for New Year's and Christmas and some Hanukkah cards. Everything that falls into these three holidays. So take the time, if you are picking out a holiday card for this year and you're using a Heritage Makers template, take a minute to look through and find something that maybe not everyone is thinking of this year. If you pick a brand new template, you never know if other people might be using it that you know, especially if you have a lot of Heritage Makers friends, find something that you love that works for you. So I just wanted to show that and just a quick reminder. And then let's pick one to play with in studio. I think I'm going to play with this ornamental season. This is a die cut card. So you'll notice this gray area is showing us the shape where the die is going to cut. So I'm going to personalize this. This is also great because it's a basic template. So you do not have to be on the HM club or have premiere to use this template. Anyone can open up 
and start this project. So great one to start with. And this is such a fun template with the, the, the uh, snowflakes and the ornament shapes and then the fun die cut shape of the card. So again, did I mention, I meant to mention when we were looking at the different products, I was going to mention, and I'm not sure if I did say so you might have to check me on this. All of these die cut ones, the pop outs and these die cuts do come in packs of 12. So you get 12 of the exact same card. If you order this one, you get one pack of 12. So however many packs of 12 you'd like to order. These other ones up here are all individual. So if I wanted to order 18 cards exactly, I could do that. These ones do come in packs of 12, but that makes them great for holiday cards because we all know that we tend to order lots and lots and lots of cards for the holidays, especially if you want to have some extra, if you forgot someone on your list. So just be aware that those do come in sets of 12. So when you're ordering one, you're getting 12. So I did want to mention that, and I'm not sure if I said that before, but just so that you're aware. Now, when we're in here, so you can see the design guide out here with certain different tips, and part of that is the trim area and all of this for the die cut shape. I'm going to go ahead and toggle this off. If you have not worked in a template like, or a project of this product type before, whatever you're using, make sure you read these tips. It will help you with designing and with knowing what to expect when you receive your product. So those are really good tips. I'm just gonna go ahead and toggle this off so that I can make it a little bigger for you guys to be able to see because we're on the class here. So this is a cute and simple holiday, holiday. template. Hey Brooke. Yes? For some reason, uh, your screen is totally white. My screen is totally white. We're not white. seeing your screen. That particular, I don't know if it's too big or what the deal is, but. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the share and open it back up. So okay. let's see. Okay, let's try this again. There you go. Back there up. We go. Okay. Hey. Oh, I think I know what it was. So I, when I did share screen, just so that we're aware for next time, it had me select a screen to show. And I think since this is a separate window, no, was, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> so I just have it showing my desktop. So this should work better. Okay. So uh, this one, so you guys probably didn't see my little explanation about the design guide. So let me turn this back on for a sec. So when you open it, you'll see these little bubbles here with certain tips relevant to this product specifically. So if you've never worked in the product that you're working in, make sure you read those so that you know to what to be aware of, of certain tips for that product specifically. I'm gonna turn it off so you guys can see a little closer up and a little better, um, but just be aware of that. And you can toggle it on and off if you decide you want to read those and you didn't read them before. So this is a really simple template. It's got enough space for multiple pictures. So great, especially if you have multiple children that you want pictures of all of them, or if you're just a crazy picture person like me and take a lot and can't possibly pick one certain picture to put on your Christmas card, this is a really helpful one for me. So the back you'll notice is just a, when it loads, is just a basic stripe that coordinates with the front of the card. So just really simple. If you wanted to, you could throw more pictures back here or add some journaling to add more text. It's just right now with the template, it's a basic with the design on the front and a cute stripe on the back, really simple. So really easy to customize if you're in a hurry or if you just don't want to make it that time consuming for you. So it's nice and simple. We're gonna go ahead and put some new pictures in here. So let me go into my stock photos. Let's see what we got. Okay, so if we pick, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, so we're just gonna pick a few pictures to drop in here. And you'll notice, so I'm just clicking on a picture. It is locked, so there's a pink border, and then it just gives me this drop photo here to swap. So I'm just grabbing the picture and pulling it right up into that little red rectangle, and then it pops it right in. So if I want to go back and adjust any of these pictures, I click it again, you can see that it's locked. You can also see right here that this little padlock is locked versus unlocked. And then under the Tools tab, I click Adjust, 
And in here, I can scale a picture in, not quite so close, and I can slide it over. So I can adjust however I want this to sit. You do just want to make sure that you keep your picture filling the entire box. Don't leave any areas like this or it will just crop it like that and you'll get an, or, uh, an edge like that. So you do wanna be careful to make sure that your picture fills the box entirely. Make sure you guys can see that. So you can see the picture goes all the way outside the box on all sides. And then just do that real quick with each of these. I'm just going to scale them in a little bit, slide it over, and then click done. This one's pretty good. I think I'm just going to slide it a little bit so that they're centered a little more. I love these with the Huskies. Uh, I have a good friend out in my neighborhood who has Huskies, and they are so much fun to play with. So really quick and easy to just put your pictures in there and adjust them however you'd like them to sit. Some you might have to get a little creative with. This one's a little wide for this spot, but it'll work. So do definitely be aware of the specifications of your pictures to make sure that you have a spot that'll fit. So really, really easy to just swap out those pictures. And then I'm going to come down here and change the text. So we'll just say this is the Wilson family. And we'll make up some names. This is, let's see, three people. So this is, oh, don't want that capital. Actually, we can even, if you're a pet person, I know Stacy on here is a pet person. We're going to put the dog's names. Yes, they must be included on all Christmas <laughs> cards. They're in the pictures. They must be. Yes. Okay. So super easy. And then if I wanted to, so this says season's greetings. If I wanted to, I could change this to be Merry Christmas or if whatever's more appropriate for your family. I know some people don't say Merry Christmas. Some people would rather say Happy Hanukkah. This would be an adorable Hanukkah card because of the blues and the not terribly Christmassy theme. So this one would be really easy to change out. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to click save so that it updates my thumbnail up here. And personally, when I finish a project, I save and quit out of it. And then I come back in just to make sure that whatever work I did saved. So I'm going to refresh this. There's my card. I'm going to open it back up. Wait for a sec. Okay, so I know that my picture saved. My text looks good. I click save again because I compulsively click save when I'm in here just so that it updates my thumbnails. And then ready to publish. Okay. And just to make sure that you've reviewed it in studio, which is what we just barely did, you click the checkbox and ready to publish. And then it adds it here to your completed projects. And then all I have to do is click add to cart. And like I said with the die cut, art, die cut cards, it's a pack of 12. So it says here it's a package of 12, quantity one, so I could do as many packages of those as I would like. Uh, really easy to update that there. And then I'm gonna do one more quick thing to go with our cards that we designed. I'm gonna start a new project, a blank project, and I'm going to make some address labels to match with our Christmas cards. I think this is such a fun touch. Let's see, we'll call these ornament. So I love doing this. It's super fun to be able to put a custom address label on the outside of your envelope, just to add that little bit extra flair to your Christmas cards. And it's so easy to make one from scratch if there isn't a template available to go with the template you select. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to make one from scratch really quick. Again, I'm gonna turn off the design guide just so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm gonna go down into my projects and under completed projects, let's see, what was this one called? 
you do need to know the name of the project that you were just working on. So this is ornamental season. I'm going to go into completed projects and there it is. So I click on it and I click the front page and it's going to show me all of the different items that are on this page. So you see a lot of different embellishments with fill colors that were used on that template. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a couple of these items up here onto my screen to be able to rearrange them and make a quick address label. So I don't think I want any pictures on here because it's gonna be pretty darn small, but you could do that. These address labels are about one inch by 2.6 inches, so just over two and a half inches wide. Just a standard address label. I'm going to drag up a couple of these cute ornaments. Let's see, I want some different colors. They might all do the same color. There we go. And this square up here is our background color. I'm going to use that. Obviously, the card we were working on is much larger, so all of the items that it's pulling up are the size that they were on that card versus on a teeny tiny little address label. So sometimes you do have to make them much smaller. If it helps, you can zoom out so that you get a full view of what you're working on and then you can make it much smaller. So I'm just gonna put a cute little border on the side of our address label here. And, oh, that guy's gonna be huge. There he is. These cute uh, little dot lines that I used for the ornaments. And then we want a couple snowflakes. Let's go ahead and make these smaller. Obviously some designs will be a little bit easier to play with than others, but once you get it smaller to a more manageable size, these are really easy to play around with. Just remember that address labels are very, very small compared to a lot of products that we have. So be aware and make sure that you're not designing something that's going to be impossible to read when you get it. I'm just going to put this cute little ornament here. I think I'll give it a white snowflake on the top. And then I'm going to take my little string that I'm using. I'm just going to line it up to look like it's hanging there. So you could easily put multiple little ornaments here, but it just adds a cute little touch. And then back in my projects under the same thing, I'm just gonna find one of these text boxes and pull it up here. This will give me the same font that was used on the project. I'm gonna turn it to black so that it's a little easier to read, but I'm gonna use the same font so that it coordinates really well with the card. So I don't remember what we called that family, but we're gonna give them a fake, I guess it would have been the Wilson because it's pulling from our new template, our new project. So I'm just gonna put in a fake address here. So obviously you would put in your address you could put in names, or if you prefer to have a phone number on here, whatever you prefer on your address labels, but however you would like it to see, like it to appear. You can make the text a little bit bigger. You can make it left justified if you prefer that look, however you want it to appear. I think I'm gonna make it a tiny bit larger. And then I'm gonna pull this guy off to the side a little bit. Will you explain about the multiple select you just did in case yeah, people absolutely. are unaware? Absolutely. So if I'm wanting to select multiple items on a page, for example, if I just want to select this over here without the text, I can click in the white space and drag. And whatever your box here touches, whatever it touches, even if it's just barely in the box, it will select. So if I select over here enough to grab that text box, it would grab it. 
but otherwise I can just select these. If you accidentally select something that you don't want, just hold down shift on your keyboard and click it and it'll deselect it. So that's true for any of these that I want to deselect. If I just wanted to move the ornament here without the background, I can select those. So if you want to add something to your selection or to remove it from your selection, just hold down shift. But really easy to just drag select and select whatever you'd like. Okay, so super easy. And then all I would do is save. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna save and quit just so that I can come back in and make sure that it was, that the changes were saved. So you can see that my thumbnail is showing there. And take a second to open it. And this may be obvious, but you're designing one design that appears on every label in this sheet and you're getting three sheets of labels. Is that correct? I forget. Uh, it's, it's two sheets. They come attached together and it's accordion folds open, but I believe it's 52 or 54 labels. So it's quite a few. Um, yeah, I think it's 54 four, but I could be wrong. Okay, so then I'm going to save, ready to publish the same as before. Yes, I reviewed it. And then all I have to do is add it to the cart with my Christmas cards. So they're both in there. And then I would just adjust the Sorry, I just realized that it's showing the uh, the agent portal for this. Normally, you would not see these over here, <laughs> but you would adjust the quantity of however you, many you would like. 54. It's a package of 54 address labels. So really easy, and then just proceed to check out from here. That way, you can get them all to come together. If this is something that can be direct shipped, let's go back for a sec, then here you'll see a, a direct ship option like this. And then you will just click it and it'll pull up your address book. Obviously, I don't have any in this account because I only use it for the classes here. But if you have addresses added to your address book, you will select them here. And you can select them one at a time or all of them. You can set different groups. So if you want to set a Christmas card group so that you just select the group and then select all of them, then you do ship directly to these addresses. It'll ask you for your return shipping address in case there's any issue with the delivery to those addresses or any one of those addresses, I should say. And then it'll add it to your cart just like these. So direct shipping, it still adds it to your cart. It just adds each one with an address. So you'll see a bundle here and it'll say direct shipping and the addresses are various depending on how many you select. So I think, Stacy, see that is all I had to show in Heritage Makers for tonight. Perfect. Thank you so much. I love that you can do the coordinated labels with your cards. It's, you're right. It's just that extra little thing that you go, oh, that is so cool. So very cool. So thank you so much for sharing that, Brooke. Okay, we are going to switch gears and we're going to do hands-on projects for a while. Uh, the first thing we're focusing on is our Members for Life, and I'm going to show you some ideas with anthology. So let me make the handy dandy phone oh i need to take back host sorry okay now i'm the host and we're gonna, make, we're gonna make the phone the spotlight video you should be able to see that now um so when i do holiday cards to me it's all about get it done quickly okay so especially if i'm doing a whole bunch of them it depends on how fussy i get so my designs are usually pretty simple and one of the things that is really cool is to find ways that you can maximize your supplies. And so if you Google search or search on the internet for um, one page wonders, it gives you some things like these that shows you how you can cut your paper and then make multiple cards out of it. So this is the one that I used and I only created four cards but I have plenty of supplies left and this is using the um, Winter Wonders bundle from or collection from our Memories for Life and so you'll see that there are a few of the shapes on there. Here's the diagonal, there's your diagonal right there. Um, there's some long pieces. I did do some cutting to get some of these others. 
And of course you can embellish with whatever you would like. So again, this is Winter Wonders. And then I brought in some stamp sets from Anthology to include these different greetings. This guy is actually one of the two inch borders that's included in that. So that's a fun thing to do. Then we have our punch here, this snowflake punch makes it very easy to cut out these. And the little beads are from Anthology as well. Uh, and then I like to pop things up. So you'll see there's a little bit of um, depth on this. It just adds that little extra something so that it doesn't feel all flat and boring to me. Um, and then I, with these snowflakes, I did not glue them down all the way to the edge because it kind of gives, again, that three-dimensional look to it. You can do whatever your little heart desires. So basic is that there was papers, and I went and pulled some two-inch borders, and then I did some stamping for the sentiments. So I want to show you the same process with the uh, Joyful and Triumphant collection. Now, there are multiple papers and things you could use for example and the thing I like about this it's double-sided so you're cutting it and you're getting two different designs these were some of the ones that I looked at um, but what really sold me on this paper were some of these two-inch border strips that look so cool on some of these designs okay so that's how I chose this one so I'm going to use this as my guide and I'm going to try and leave that where you can kind of see it and I did adjust it slightly because I make my card bases five and a half by four and a quarter. And so I actually only cut this at one inch instead of one and a half inch. So when you look at these grids, you want to make sure that you do the important cuts first. And that important cut is that one inch off of there. So I'm going to cut this to 11 inches here. And that way I will have this first cut done and I don't have to worry about messing anything up, okay? Then I'm going to come and I'm going to do this two and a half inch cut. Now I need to make sure that I turn my paper because remember I just cut the one inch off of here so I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do a two and a half inch cut. And it's easiest for me if I do it this way because then I don't have to do math in my head because math in my head is a bad thing. And then it's telling me to cut that into Five and a half. So then I'm going to take this guy. Five and a half is actually going to be half of this because if you do that math, that comes up to 11. So now I have these two pieces all ready to go. Now, out of this long piece, I will show you that it also tells me to cut these at, I'm going to do five and a half rather than five and a quarter. Again, because I like having them stretch the full length of my card and I can always come back and trim them shorter if I want to but once they're trimmed shorter you're kind of stuck with it and you can decide how many of your scraps you want to change you save okay next is this section here and this is four and three quarters and four and three quarters so basically I'm taking this piece and I'm cutting it in half now if you've forgotten which side was I cutting from go back and measure okay there's my 11 so I know that I'm cutting this one at four and three quarters and let me tell you um, I had to remeasure this multiple times on the first time, so don't sweat it if you're like, oh, oops, what I do? Okay, now that I've got that done, you'll see that I'm now taking it three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. Okay, so I'm going to take this little guy here, cut it down to three and a half, cut the next one down to three and a half, and technically that would leave it at three and a half, but because I only did 11 inches off the one, my one is a little bit bigger. No big deal. I'm going to take one of these and cut it on the diagonal. And the easiest way to do this is to move my trimmer head out of the way. I'm going to line up the corners on my little um, line that your trimmer leaves, okay? And then you know that you're going corner to corner. And I'm just going to do one of those. You can do two if you'd like, whatever your little heart desires, okay? Now, this last one, I'm going to do a three and a half and then cut some of these in pieces. So here we go again. Don't we love easy math? Three and a half, three and a half, and you could split to three and a quarter if you want, whatever works for you. And then it's telling us to cut a two inch and a two and three quarters. So I'm going to rotate this and I cut it at two inches and that should leave me two and three quarters. It sure does. Okay, I'm going to do that on both of these pieces. 
And you can uh, decide if you want to mix and match these. I usually try and keep my little stacks of the same sizes together so that I know what is what. Okay, all cut. Now comes the fun part. Um, again, because I am usually cheap about things, I like to do white card bases and I can always cover them with whatever I want, okay? Um, and typically if I'm doing my holiday cards, I will go out and buy white card bases that have envelopes so they're all set to go. In this case, I just had white card stock here and so I just use them as is. Um, and I'm going to then work with some of these designs and I'm actually gonna lay out my previous cards because I don't wanna have to think about designs again. And the great thing is you can come up with one design and reuse it because unless you're sending the same person multiple cards, they are never going to know <laughs> that you have use that design over again, okay? So I'm going to adhere this piece just like that. I'm copying one of my existing cards and I can leave a little white if I want or I can bump it right up against the edge, whatever works best. And then I have some of my favorite little guys here, some two inch borders, as well as in the journal cards for this collection, you'll see that quite a few of them have these beautiful journal cards that work really well for um, adding to your cards, okay? So I think I'm actually going to use on this one, I think I wanna do this little guy here. So I'm just gonna trim off the black parts of this. So there's one black part, and I just want to make sure that it is four and a quarter. So if I have to trim off anything extra, then I will do that. And then I have this that will go all the way across there. If I want to add anything else to it, I can. For example, maybe I want to put a little bit of this black in the middle, because that's kind of fun, huh? I like that. So I'm just going to measure this down and trim it down to five and a quarter, five and a half, because that's the length of that. Oh, yep, loving that. Okay, so take advantage of all the pieces that you have in your two inch borders. Okay, and then this guy, I actually am going to pop him up because I want it to stand out a little bit more. You could also use, um, if you had twine or something, you tie some twine on it, you know, whatever makes it just that extra little specialness that you want to do. The thing is, is remember, if you're making lots of cards, you may not want to make them super fancy because then you're going to be there all winter making your cards instead of actually sending them out, which is typically what happens with me. Okay, there's my card, card number one. All done. Pretty easy, huh? Okay, let's take card base number two. And we're going to do our diagonal friend over here. And I can either use the, except for that's why you would want to do, I could do it up like this. I can do it with the red side. I can do whatever my little heart desires here. Let's see, let's decide what we're going to do for the sentiment or for the other parts on this. And, Oh, the decisions that we have to make. Oh, I actually kind of like that one there. Okay, so we're gonna adhere this guy, and you can put it all the way in the corner. I kind of like having it up just a little bit, okay? So make sure you get as close to those edges as you can, but it's not always gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna put him, and I'm making it so that it's even on the side and the bottom like that. And then I'm gonna trim this guy down. I'm just gonna put it just off to the side. I wanna have about the same amount of space on both sides, because you'll see there's wood on both sides there, so I'm gonna trim that down just a little bit. And I actually think, yeah, we'll go with that. Just like that, or maybe, oh, no, we'll go like that. Okay, this is what happens when you create on the fly, right? Then your mind has to embrace the ideas. One thing I've learned about adhesive, if you don't push it down really, really hard, you can always come back and move it just a little bit too if you need to. Now on this one, 
Okay, so I'm gonna put him up here. Again, that same spacing. I've got this little bow here, and I have all these beautiful pearls, and some of them are kind of smallish. And I just want to spit this up just a little bit, so I'm going to go with that plan, okay? Uh, please make sure you close your little grabs and things when you're using them, because they spill oh so easy. Don't know how I would know that, but they do. Okay, I'm using some of our mini glue dots. They come off on these little squares, and I'm just going to put it on the back. Easier said than done. The back of my little curl here. Pull it off if it rolls a little bit or comes off just a little to the edge just roll it under and there we go something kind of sparkly in the middle of it card number two done okay card number three we're going to do we're going to switch the to the other direction and we're going to use this guy as our guide because i have this pretty little thing here and the only catch is you really can't fit the sentiment on. So I'm just gonna trim it right around the black there because I just want the black portion. As much as I love that little saying, which I could use in a different area. So we'll see how this works. Okay, so I've got him. I am gonna trim off the sentiment just for the heck of it because you just never know. Okay, on this one, we're gonna put him like that. And then I'm going to take, this guy has some little words on it. Let's see, oh, this one's good because it has the music notes. And then he can go over the top. Now, here's how I create this little flag on the end. And you can make it as deep or as shallow as you like. I kind of eyeball where the middle is. You can measure the middle and I trim up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the corner and I'm gonna go right to where that middle was. There's that side. And then I'm gonna come from the other corner right to where that middle is. And that way, they both measure the same. They're at the same angles. Everything works really well on that, okay? So now I'm gonna adhere this piece down. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of space in those corners. You can put it all the way in. And then I'm going to put him right smack in the middle. I'm just going to do two pieces here. And on this one, I think I'm actually going to leave it out just a little because I do want to include this really fun little saying. Okay? And because I have some wiggle room, I can do that. I'm just going to center it top to bottom on this red piece and leave a little bit of space on that side. And it's nice, you can kind of line it up on those. Now, this other one's matted. And the reason I matted him was because he got kind of lost. And so putting it on the dark cardstock made it pop. Where this one's got the black, I really don't have to do that. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't like having the red line just on three sides unless I go all the way to the edge. But then I don't have the right spacing. So I'm gonna come back, I'm going to trim off those red pieces because I can, because it's my card. I can do whatever I want. Okay, and apparently I missed a little bit on this side, so I'm gonna come back and just clean that up a little bit here. Okay, now we're ready. Now when I put it on, I do have a little bit of a border around it. And I'm going to use again some squares and because these are big squares i'm just using two if you're using little ones you'd want to put one in each corner uh, and the reason i'm not using little ones is because it takes me longer to stick things down okay so again i want to make sure i'm centered top to bottom and i like to have the same amount of spacing on the size i do top to bottom so that goes there and then i have my saying here that i can add Wherever looks best. I think it looks good there. You could pop this as well. I'm just going to tear this down and I want it, whoops, not there. I want it right in the middle, kind of lined up against that because I don't want it to go off the flag. Yeah. This is one of those things that uh, when you're thinking about it, you should probably do it first. Okay, card number three, all done. How about card number four? Where are we out on time? Oh, we're doing so good. 
Okay, card number four is this guy here. And on this one, I love this green wreath guy. So we're going to do it just a little bit different than some of the other ones. And because it's going to line up, oh yeah, this will totally work. Okay, so I'm going to trim off a little bit of this. Get my scraps out of here. And I know it needs to be pretty close to the top of those berries if I'm going to get this whole thing on here. Because I need it to be four and a quarter. Hmm, the question is, yeah, we'll be okay. All right, there is my four and a quarter piece, okay? And I'm gonna put this guy in the middle, and then one of my skinny guys, which hmm, seem to have lost. Wish someone was here to tell me where I put it, because it's surely hidden someplace right in front of me. Oh, there they are, okay. There he is, okay? And this one is going to reverse like that, and I'm actually going to um, do the little flag that I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. So hard to know. Okay, we're gonna go with this. So I'm gonna put this on the front. And then line it up on the end, but equal space on top and bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to put this guy just like that. Actually, I think I'm going to change my mind about that because I really would rather have the flag coming out that way, okay? Same thing with this flag, only I want to make him a little bit deeper on the points here, so I'm going to cut it just a little bit deeper. Okay, there's my points, and that actually will just about fit. I'm just going to trim off this hair just so I know that it's gonna work. Now, I do want to have a sentiment on this, and so I'm going to use um, Season's Greetings Works. That stamp set is hiding from me. There it is. Okay, these are the stamp sets. We have October and we have this November, and the Season's Greeting one is in the October one. So I'm going to pull off the Season's Greetings, and we have this block that has some lines on it so that if I want to make sure I'm stamping straight, then I can put it just like that. And I have my stack of inks. And I'm going to go with black on this. I could use a different color if I wanted to. And because I know I want to make sure I have enough room when I do this, I'm going to just put a little bit of a tick mark here. And then I'll just slide it under just a little bit more, okay? There's my tick mark so that I make sure that when I stamp, I'm on the other side of that, okay? Now with these, you want to very carefully ink these up. Don't push it down too hard. I tap lightly and go across until I get it all inked up. So you'll see that it's very well covered. Um, and then when you press it down, make sure you don't rock. You just want to Press it smoothly and not too hard, so I'm going to line it up. I'm going to press it down, bring it back up again. Voilà. Now, I'm going to tell you a little trick. It, sometimes you don't stamp things perfectly. This is where your micron pin comes in handy because you can come back in and you can draw in anything that you kind of messed up. But really, don't worry about it too much. It all works out. And this ink takes just a minute for it to dry, so I'm going to be very careful as I press this down. This is a pigment ink, not a dye ink, so I want to make sure that I don't um, accidentally get that ink on something else. Okay, that guy's down. Now on this one, I'm going to again use my foam squares, and I'm actually going to do four on this one, just so, since it's so long. Now, if you wanted to, you could use solid core cardstock um, as your as a background to this, like I did with the blue on the um, Winter Wonders. If you don't want to have the white showing, that's a great option for adding some additional color to these. Okay, there you go. Four cards done in just a few minutes, and I'm going to try and clear out my mess here. 
oops, let's go the right way. Okay, there are four cards that are ready to send in just a matter of minutes. Wasn't that easy? So, so easy. Okay, so that's two different stamp sets. Let me show you some fun things you can do with anthology. Now, Lisa had a great idea, and she said, couldn't you use the Nifty Gifties? And I'm going to show you the Nifty Gifty box. This is the Nifty Gifty box. It's for gift card holders, but it has tons and tons of stuff in it. And some of them are beautiful for using on cards. Um, and I combined this with Christmas wishes. So one of them is this fun bow guy. It comes flat. You stick the brad through all the parts and then adhere it on. And then this is a little pocket that you build that you could put a gift card in. Or you can have um, Season's Greetings. You could put a little photo here of your family. You could write them a quick note. This paper is from the um, Christmas Cheer Collection. And again, it's on a white card base, so you can easily write on the inside. And white paper is much cheaper to buy than your cardstock is. Okay, this one. Um, this again is out of the uh, Christmas cheer collection, but this little guy, the green piece, and this are from the Nifty Gifties, and then you'll recognize the stamp set, and in fact, you'll notice that I didn't stamp that S very well, so I used the Micron pen trick, okay? And then here's one more, and this one, again, Christmas tree in the background, I love to make, these are called belly bands, and they just slide off because it just adds a little something extra to it, and all it is is a strip, and this strip came out of the Nifty Gifties. This is one of the guys that folds in half, and this is a little card just like we had in the season's greetings. Okay, so the thing I love about these little fold and half guys, which I don't remember what they're called or what they're for, it's a perfect mat for these little itty bitty cards. And you write your note on the inside, put your little belly band on. Um, if you want to make a belly band yourself, uh, do them about an inch, maybe an inch and a half wide. And the key to this is don't wrap it too tight because otherwise you have the issue that I'm having right now trying to get it on. There's that one. Okay, this last one does not use Nifty Gifties. I want to show you the possibilities using just the Christmas Cheer Collection. It's a fun striped paper. I love this red snowflake. And these are stickers that come just like this. They're all layered. Look at how thick those are. They're triple thick. And so I just put them on on an angle like they're hanging. And there's some of our cute little uh, pearls out of the Pearls and Brad's goodie box. So four cards using a combination of products from Nifty Gifties as well as Christmas Cheer. And again, these are really quick to put together because these pieces are already cut for you. So the only thing I had to stamp was the season's greetings. Pretty slick, eh? Okay, my friends, that concludes that part of it. And I'm going to make me the spotlight video. And I forgot to give away points again. Let me do that, darn it all. Uh, the, oh, and the joy letters are from the, um, the Christmas Wishes collection, which is this guy, okay? And mine is really decimated, sorry. It has stickers, it has other, it has chipboard pieces, it has paper, it has these foil letters, Christmas Wishes, okay? Now, for points, let's give away some points to... Nicolette and Dennis, we're going to give points to you. We'll give away one more set of points. And the other set of points is going to Celeste and Celeste. I'm sorry, I don't want to say your name and really make it sound bad. Celeste and Nicolette, if you will send your Heritage Makers account to Lisa, she would happily put those points in your account for you. Okay, any other questions that we have before we wrap up tonight? I hope this gave you some great ideas for cards you can make. Quick and easy, they don't have to be involved, they can just be fun, and that way you'll enjoy it and you'll get them out. And rather than feeling guilty about not having your cards out for the holidays, right? So many options, hey? Okay. Hey. So, yes? Were you using the ink from Anthology DIY? I was using the ink from Anthology DIY. It comes in these little stacks like this. Um, I, at home, I have other inks I use, but these are the ones I use in the office. Good question. Okay. Oh, and yeah, Helen, let's have a card making party. Yes, it's the best way to do it. Gather all the supplies. In fact, if you want to gather the supplies and have your friends come over and have the ideas for them, they'll love you for life. 
guaranteed. Okay, my friends, we are going to call it an evening. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll be back next month. Oh, Lisa, I meant to check the date. I don't suppose you know off the top of your head. Do you? Hang on, I'll look. How about November 16th? We'll see you here November 16th. Not sure what the theme is, unless Lisa remembers off the top of her head, uh, but we will see you November 16th. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye.